uh, girls are deprived of their liberty in many ways and in many settings. We find them detained in jails, prisons, uh, care homes, psychiatric facilities, hospitals, um, even private homes. And this happens by the decisions of uh, the state, uh, often by the decision of family members, community members, intimate partners, um, and other, others who are uh, involved in the care or protection of children, including employers, and sometimes um, armed and uh, criminal gangs that are also uh, depriving girls of their liberty. Uh, in the global study, um, the gender dimension is interested to bring out how girls are disproportionately or differently affected by deprivation of liberty. Uh, because often girls are invisible in the larger um, group of uh, female or children population. And that, that's uh, the aim of uh, the gender dimension in the global study. And also one of the challenges was also to identify who are girls within the group of children and who are girls within the group of women. Because often the evidence, the data, the literature we, we get talks about generally children or generally women uh, without uh, age disaggregation. And it was hard um, to find um, precisely which is more about girls, though we understand that um, most of the things that affect children and that affect women also affect girls uh, in a different way, in a, in a disproportionate manner. Uh, coming back to the provision of liberty uh, in the gender sense or from a gender perspective, um, most of the causes of the provision of liberty for girls are uh, in a way gendered. They have, uh, they have deep-rooted um, causes and uh, factors that determine the deprivation of liberty related to discrimination against uh, women and girls, gender-based discrimination, gender-based violence. And also when it comes to the consequences, again, deprivation of liberty is very gendered in a way that affects girls is very much different from the way it affects uh, boys or men. Uh, the outcomes of uh, deprivation of liberty are very uh, particular uh, in a way they affect the health, um, the well-being, the survival development of uh, girls uh, as opposed to boys or as opposed to also adult uh, women. Uh, from the data we have gathered, uh, the first question, I mean, the first point of analysis was what are the main causes uh, as we are speaking of gendered dimension and we found that gender stereotypes are very much um, important in the analysis, the understanding of gender stereotypes, how they play within the criminal justice system, how they play within institutions, how they play in other forms of deprivation of liberty, was very important to understand how girls are differently affected or disproportionately affected uh, compared to boys uh, in the same uh, circumstance. Uh, there are many sets of gender stereotypes uh, such as related to girls' morality and sexuality, girls' uh, so-called appropriate role within the family, the, uh, the community, within school and other public settings, and also um, uh, gender stereotypes related to girls' uh, frailty, weakness, and the need for protection that relates to uh, protective forms of deprivation of liberty. Uh, so gender stereotypes plays uh, most of uh, the role, but. Uh, Aside that, uh, there are other causes, economic marginalization, social and, uh, social and cultural factors, political uh, factors, um, also experience of violence that affect girls in a different way. Um, they are not independent, they are mostly linked to gender stereotype. And then this all plays in the home, in the criminal justice system, in institutions, and even in situations of migration related detentions, armed conflict, and other settings. Um, how this deprivation of liberty, or how uh, once girls are pushed to deprivation of liberty because of these causes, their experiences are also different. They have um, different um, health needs while they are in detention, for example. They have uh, reproductive and health needs that 
need to be given adequate attention, but in our uh, analysis of the data, uh, we found that uh, girls' specific health needs are not uh, given the proper attention that they deserve. Uh, menstrual health, uh, adequate wa uh, water and sanitation, access to reproductive health care are very much uh, less available for girls. Um, also, their privacy or uh, the right, their right to privacy is affected very much in different ways. Sometimes male guards search uh, girls in the detention. Um, they uh, are faced by sexual harassment, sec rape, and different forms of sexual violence. And um, some of the, the searches actually amount to violence as well as violation of privacy. Um, worse forms of searches in, in a way inappropriate touching, uh, lifting of their breasts, uh, bending uh, over at the waist, and even the vaginal search, virginity taste, all. Uh, different forms of um, degrading uh, uh, and harassing uh, search apply, uh, which violates their privacy as well as uh, amounts to violence. Um, the, the, the consequences are far more greater than uh, what boys uh, experience in, in detention, be it in criminal uh, justice system, in institutions, and other forms of uh, detention. And uh, coming to armed conflict, for example, girls are faced with uh, forced marriage, sexual violence, rape. Um, often uh, girls are used uh, as a hostage to, to terrorize um, or, or intimidate the public as well as the opposing government or other armed forces. Um, in migration also the same, sometimes we hear that uh, migration detention is differently affecting women or girls um, in, in some places that um, detaining girls, young girls for example, uh, pregnant girls or, or mothers uh, with children might be considered as more shocking and more deterring and uh, it might uh, encourage a tendency of targeting women and girls. Um, so the, the main agenda of the study is to prevent detention. Uh, by no means girls should be placed in uh, detention in, because of their age or because of their sex. They should not be targeted. Uh, so prevention is the main agenda. Uh, while um, we are working on prevention, there should be alternative forms of uh, care or placement that can be applied for girls in their best interest. And again, also while working on uh, uh, improving such alternative care, if girls uh, find themselves in the state of deprivation of liberty, especially in state uh, institutions, the state should improve the conditions, uh, the, the, the concerns that we have talked about, health issues, water and sanitation, food, uh, and also other specific needs that girls may have. Um, and also the state should work on uh, reintegration of girls who are deprived of uh, their liberty. So generally we consider different legal, uh, institutional policy and budgetary interventions from the state. Um, 